It is 11.01, and the business meeting of the 74th West Coast Science Fantasy Conference will be in order. I am Kevin Stanley. My pronouns are he and him, and I am the presiding officer of the business meeting. You can address me as uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Honorable Chair, or anything of that nature. Mechanical note, the area of the business meeting that the chair will recognize members to speak from is the bowl, lower floor, and everything from the pillar in the center over to the edge in the upper level of the fan tables area. Not that there's many people over here, but I am not going to consider the fan tables area in play for the purpose of being recognized, although should we have a vote, those people wouldn't be involved. If somebody who is up there wants to be recognized, they need to come into basically my official field of view. The dealer's room is also not considered in play for this purpose. We are going to have some debatable questions. There are times when the chair is going to have to, people are going to want to speak, uh, and the chair is going to have to recognize you. In general, it is preferable to, if you want to be recognized, to stand, but not everybody can stand. And, those pe and so I'm going to try to be lenient in, in this measure, uh, unless it becomes really challenging, in which case we'll have to work out a little bit stronger way of doing traffic control. Um, we have one mic at the lectern and a runner. Where, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Yes, there you go. I apologize. She's standing up. Yes. Oh, no, don't do that, please. Anyway, if you do need a microphone brought to you, we will bring the microphone to you. Uh, if you can, I would not I would prefer if you want to address the meeting to come to the lectern. The microphone can is adjustable. Just move it to point at yourself if necessary. Undock it and speak into it. Are there any other questions regarding procedure before we continue with the meeting? Seeing none, I also be, I, did, I saw one as we come in here. Obviously, because of the nature of this room, we just need to live with the fact that people are crossing back and forth and let it go. Very well. On my left is the secretary, Martin Pine, making his first appearance as an officer of the business meeting. The agenda for the meeting was published in, on the website, in a progress report. Oh, that's right, I have been reminded. This meeting is being recorded, the recording will be posted to YouTube, perhaps initially on my personal channel, Kevin Stanley, and when I get around to setting it up, the WesterCon 74 YouTube channel. When you are called upon, wait for the microphone to get to you, say your name, and uh, yelling out from the audience is not something that will work. Uh, if a bunch of you start yelling out, I'm probably just going to ignore you all until someone gets legitimate recognition. The business passed on an agenda was published on the westercon.org, the westercon74.org websites, both of them, was published in Progress Report 5 of Westercon 74, is on page 35 of the program book, which was also published online as well. There has been no business submitted other than what is in the uh, printed agenda. That doesn't mean somebody couldn't propose something, but we'll get to that if, if we do have to. Therefore, our first two items of business, the first one has to do with the WesterCon 75 selection. At last year's WesterCon business meeting, there having been no eligible bids selected, the WesterCon 70, I said, I the wrong The 75 selection at WesterCon 73 in uh, Los Angeles. The WesterCon business meeting last year 
selected a committee consisting of Kevin Stanley and Lisa Hayes and awarded Westercon 75 to them. There was a strong understanding that they were to seek out a committee actually interested in holding one that wasn't in Tonopah. That committee had unilateral authority that to do that under existing precedent multiple times to simply pick a committee and go forth and do it. They did so. That committee is the current Westercon 75 Committee for Anaheim. Uh, they are will be selling and have been selling memberships at their table located in the back, opposite back of the room from where I'm standing next to the bar. There is no business before the business meeting regarding Westercon 75 selection. And that brings us to the selection of Westercon 76, the 2024 Westercon, which was held by ballot. And I would like to call upon the site selection administrator, Sharon Sabarsky, to present a report on the results of the voting. Hello, my name is Sharon Sparsky, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, the Constitution of Westercon says that for filing requirements, a Westercon bid committee must provide written evidence of the following. At least two separate people declaring themselves to be chairman and treasurer, an organizing instrument such as bylaws, articles of incorporation or association, or a partnership agreement, a letter of intent or option from a hotel, or other facility declaring specific dates at which the Western College shall be held, and a sponsor, sorry, it's hard to talk with the mask club, um, and for a sponsoring organization from within the United States of America, the evidence that the sponsoring organization is a nonprofit association or corporation within the applicable state law of the sponsoring organization. We have received an intense bid from the Utah in 2024 committee. We have the chair, treasurer, and a letter of agreement from the hotel, but not the um, document organization or the sponsoring organization. So there were no qualified bids this year for Westercon 76 site selection. Therefore, the procedure to select is as specified in section 3.16 Procedures where no bid wins or is eligible. Should, should no eligible bid gain the needed majority, or should there be no qualified bidding committee, or should none of the above win a three-fourths majority of the site selection business meeting, this, um, of the administrative Westercon may award the Westercon to any bid, or simply majority of the meeting may decide that they are unable to decide. If the business meeting does not choose a site, the board of directors of the Los Angeles Science Fiction Society Incorporated shall choose the site within six weeks of the close of the administrative Westercon. Westercon. If none of the above wins, none of the bids which were on the ballot may be selected. A site chosen under the provisions of this section shall not be restricted by any portion of this article except this section and section 3.1. Okay. So those were all the boring details. For the so information. Just a moment, Sharon. 
so they know the section 3.1 is the rule that Westercon must be held in Western North America or Hawaii west of 104 West. Thank you. For the information of the meeting, there has been a qualified, had there been a qualified bid, the results would have been, there were 60 voters, two, no preference, so 58 votes with a preference. Of those 58 votes, 55 were for Utah, two were for any state that protests, that protects abortion rights, and one for none of the above. So, as far as I understand things, now I turn things over to Kevin for the business meeting to decide what to do next. Thank you very much, Ms. Zabarski. I appreciate the detailed report and outlining the situation for the members. No, 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 and Sharon, I'm sure you, you can go ahead and sit back down again, and I'm sure we're, you're relieved. We thank you very much. Give her a hand for her work. No eligible bid. Uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, all right. The chair recognize, recognizes uh, Joni Datra. Would, would you come to the lectern? We ha I know I can hear you, but they can't, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Just, just turn it back on. Turn it back on. Just leave it. Let's leave it on, I think, for the duration again. Joni Burrell Dasha. It's a point of inquiry. Did we know that you talked? had failed to qualify under the one item before the vote was administered this weekend? It's not relevant. It's an irrelevant question. Nobody asked. Nobody asked the administrator. That's an answer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Does the member have, well, for what purpose does the member seek recognition? I was just going to ask if you... Okay, in that case, if you're going to come, if you wish to ask a question, either either come up here or have the microphone brought to you. And, and please stand if it's possible for you to stand when addressing the meeting. Talk up there. Just a simple point. Name? Oh, Linda Robinette, pronouns she, her. Were you aware, was the Utah bid aware that they had not uh, sent in 100% of the required paperwork? Uh, that's a question of the Utah bid. I mean, it, it, you're actually debating a question that isn't even before the meeting. Okay. I, I apologize. All right, we just simply have to proceed with this. Some of the questions that are being asked in a technical nature are not particularly relevant to the to time. We, have, we are where we are. Understood. The, there is no ele there is no eligible bid won the election. Therefore, the business meeting may decide by a three-fourths vote to select a committee. And I want to make this very clear. The meeting is selecting a committee, not a specific site or entity otherwise. This is very well worked out in Westercon precedent, most recently in 2011. Um, the committee does not actually have to hold the convention anywhere other uh, they say so. Um, okay, Mr. Kowalczyk. Rick Kowalczyk, he, him. It seems clear that the intent of the voters was for the Utah committee. Therefore, I am moving to appoint the Utah committee appointed by Charles Galloway, Mike Willamette, and whoever his treasurer was to host Westercon 76, and I employ, uh, whatever the word is, 
And I suggest that this be adopted by unanimous consent rather than wasting a lot of time. Mr. Kowalczyk, because not every person in this room is an expert in Westercon rules, the chair is going slowly through expansions. Just turn the microphone off and leave it on the lectern, please. I'm trying to get to the point where I can get to the thing you are trying to do. Trust me on this, please. I just want everybody here to be absolutely clear what will happen here. We are going to select a committee. I think I got through all the technical issues involved. The implicit question that is actually before us is on the selection of a convention committee for Westercon 76. The chair and I would like to entertain nominations for sites to host Westercon 76 and assumes the Utah in 2024 committee for committees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. Of the committee of Charles Galloway and Cheryl Snedden that names itself the Utah in 2024 committee. Are there any other nominations for sites to host Westercon 76? Hearing none, nominations are now closed. Is there any objection to declaring Utah in 2024? There is objection. Therefore, the chair suggests that we refer to the question of site selection, the motion with the nominees to a committee of the whole to discuss it and perhaps vote on it. And when that committee rises, this meeting as a will vote on the final result. Not everybody is familiar with committee of the whole. This means that everybody in this room is considered a big old committee for the purpose of discussing site selection. That committee is permitted to debate informally if it wishes and take test votes and mobile votes of every sort. And then at some point come to some sort of conclusion perhaps and then by a majority vote can then rise and report its conclusions to the meeting. Is there any objection to going in committee of the whole to discuss site selection? Hearing none, the chair appoints Mr. Pine here as the chair of the committee of the whole. The meeting will return to order. I'd like to call upon the chair of the committee of the whole to present the report. The committee of the whole having had under consideration at the matter of Westercom 76 site selection voted to recommend the adoption of the Utah in 2024 committee to the full assembly. The question on the floor is shall this assembly adopt the Utah in 2024 committee as comprised previously discussed as Westercom 76. Is there anyone who still wishes to debate this question? Very well. A three-fourths vote being necessary to adopt this motion. All those in favor of selecting the Utah in 2024 committee as the Westercom 76 committee, please raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There being more than three-fourths in the affirmative, the motion carries. Mr. Galway, your committee is selected as the Utah, the Utah 2024 committee is selected as Westercom 76. The chair appreciates that this will not be a three-hour meeting. Is there any objection to thanking the site selection administrators and ordering the ballots be destroyed? Hearing none, Ms. Zagorski, thank you very much and please deal with the destruction of the site selection ballots. The results are now official. For what purpose does the member rise? Yes, there is a matter of business before the meeting next as you know, still on the agenda. Do you still want to address the meeting or is it about some other matter? It is about... Okay, then go ahead. I'm sorry I wasn't recognized earlier. I couldn't put my hand up high enough. My question is what happens, if anything, 
if the Utah Committee does not obtain nonprofit status? There is no oversight beyond that. In a technical sense, they are the committee, they make the decisions. That was, oh yes, name, name, name information for the microphone back. Judy Morbin. But the chair does like to point out that we have done this before. We have awarded Western Ponds to committees with no entity of any sort, and that's the possibility. I believe a member's trying to be recognized. I, I, bear, I can only, I partially occluded, so there we go. Name, please. Carol Alves, and I'm a she. Thank you. Um, there was a comment made earlier that Westercon may be going downhill. The fact that you've got even a hundred plus people here tells me Westercon is still very alive. Okay. Thank. Thank you. Uh, believe it or not, we just don't have a question on the floor for that. I, I don't. Unless someone wants to raise a question about the future of Westercon, which is not in order at this time. I do not want to debate this any further. I'd like to deal with the remainder of the agenda that takes precedent, and then we can undertake new business. For what purpose does the member seek recognition? And name, please, once you have the microphone. Adrian Foster, just a quick question. Um, I thought it was in the bylaws that only somebody governed by a nonprofit. The, uh, no, this, the, I'm, the question is not relevant at this time. The matter is settled. Yeah. Ms. Foster, I promise I promise you, after this meeting is order, over, I'll be happy to explain every piece of the process to you. Okay? I promise. I, I, anybody who knows me knows I will explain things until I'm blue in the face, or right now red in the face, I suppose. For what purpose does the member rise? Kim Brown. Um, uh, the chair does not want to entertain any discussion about the future of Westercon, technicalities, no, no, election. No, okay, not about you. the future right. of Westercon. Okay. Um, this lady had her hand up mm -hmm. before the, the vote was taken. You failed to recognize her. The chair did not see anybody attempting to read. I, and, the, I, and, the, no, and the matter, if that time it would have been necessary for someone to raise a point of order that the chair had missed rec recognizing someone. The, the, the matter is, in fact, behind us. The matter is closed. The chair can make mistakes. It is the responsibility of other members who see the chair making mistakes to raise. You can. You don't need recognition for a point of order. Just call out point of order if you see a mistake being made. I tried. I didn't hear anything. I get that. I guess that. I apologize, but the. So yeah. what I want to know All right. is what I want to know is if this question had been raised beforehand, would the vote have been different? No. no. It's not, okay. Okay. it's not, a, it, the know. debate on this matter is closed. If you want to raise a new motion to try and unseat a committee, I don't even think it's real, a lot legal, actually. Yeah. Does somebody who voted on, is, okay, I know, I'll get, you're right. Point of order. Uh, let me let me answer. The member actually just made a parliamentary inquiry. If this is a point of order regarding the parliamentary inquiry, uh, is it? Is it? Tell me what your question is. I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, go ahead and say it. The point of order is simply the question. Name. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason Spitzer. Good morning. Um, I think we can agree that the This is not a valid point of order. Okay. Honestly, it is not. Okay. But I will. That, what the member may have raised was a, was a parliamentary inquiry on how you can get back to the debate. Any person who voted in favor, or yeah, any person who voted in favor of selecting the Utah committee may move that we reconsider the question, and if that is seconded, a majority can vote to reconsider the question, at which point we are back to where we started with the three-fourths vote needed to select someone. Is there somebody who voted on the prevailing side in favor of selecting Utah who wishes to reconsider the vote? Ms. Marcy? 
just so that no one feels that they've been disenchanted. Just disenchanted. Disenfranchised. Thank you. Um, I move to reconsider the vote. Okay. Is there a second to the motion to reconsider? I hear a motion to reconsider. I move. I second. I, I, it's been seconded. I got it. This turns out to be debatable. The question is on whether we should get bring the vote back up again. Who uh, first speaker in favor of reconsideration? Uh, I have uh, Mr. Parliamentary Trim. inquiry. Parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Right. A microphone, please. I, I won't be able to hear you. Okay. Uh, Andrew Tremblay. Sharon. Uh, uh, actually, this is for the chair. Does a move to reconsider imply that the person making the motion? believes that their vote may have been wrong. No. Okay. okay. Actually, second parliamentary. Uh, the member will, okay. I have, a, I have a point of order here. Bring the microphone over here. The member, will, when the microphone reaches you, state your name and state your point of order. Joni Dashoff, Parliamentary Inquiry. Joni Dashoff, before we proceed, I'd can we fix the problem for short people by handing out colored paper, which in this case would be the souvenir book, closest to fix the problem as we have done so at Worldcon business meetings? That is a, it turns out technically to be a question of privilege, but the answer is yes, if people are, if there are people who need something to be recognized with and don't, didn't pick up their program books, if there is somebody who wants to be able to make themselves more visible to be chair, especially if they are standing behind or sitting behind people who might block the chair's view. And uh, while that's going on, I, I will address somewhat further the uh, parliamentary inquiries. That moving to reconsider a motion does not necessarily mean that you think that the decision was wrong, it means that you may want the members to decide whether they want to take it back up again. Parliamentary inquiry on that particular point, Mr. Uh, you have to wait for the microphone. I hear a parliamentary inquiry. I'm waiting to take that while the, while this distribution issue is dealt with. Yes, yes. thank you. Um, Jason Spitzer, parliamentary inquiry on this point is that you mentioned a person who voted in favor of a motion which passed can call meeting a second of course for that motion to be reconsidered. That is correct. So it may be an obvious question. Why does it need to be someone who voted in the affirmative as opposed to someone who opposed the motion? The short answer is because Robert's Rules of Order says so. Okay. If, I'm just curious. Is there, I mean, that's why I'm not opposing you. Is there a better reason? Is there a reason that we want someone who says That is a question of philosophy that this meeting is not in power to discuss. Okay, thank you. No, 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 no. The, okay, on the question of reconsideration, who wishes to speak in favor of us reconsidering and the chair recognizes over here? That's what I kind of think about, I'm sure. Yeah, thank you. Linnea Thompson, and I wish to speak in favor of reconsideration because I think it is very important that all members are heard, and uh, we did have someone who was overlooked, probably due to the speed to which we were trying to close things, and I think it's important that everyone get airtime. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against reconsideration? Ms. Hayes. Well, I'll agree it is Lisa important. Hayes. Right. Lisa Hayes. Well, I agree it's important for everyone to get their point across. If it is clear that the meeting has a majority in one direction, that majority does not need its time wasted re-debating the same thing over and over again when it has an overwhelming majority. The chair recognizes I, I want to recognize the person who believes they were slighted and I understand their concern. Do you wish to debate whether we should reconsider and bring the vote back up again? I'm sorry. Well, okay, Ms. Mormon, I say. I, I was actually pointing further back there. Oh, ah. Uh, you. You had you were the one who I who I did who I missed the first time around. Get behind yes. you. Oh. All right. Okay. There were there were two of us. There were two of us there. Go on. In case that was this is a, in favor of, a recon, uh, of reconsideration. That was. It. Is there anybody else wanting to okay, okay to speak against reconsideration or in favor? In favor. Okay. Move the previous. Sorry, Benny Allo. He him moved the previous question. That's to close debate, is which is non-debatable. Is there a second? Thank you. A two-thirds vote being necessary to close the debate on the motion to reconsider. That doesn't 
passed the motion to reconsider, it simply ends the debate on the matter, and then we would proceed to vote on the motion to reconsider. A two-thirds a two -thirds vote, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, you're right, I forgot standing rule one, it's been a long time. Um, this being a motion to close debate, without recognizing people for debate, how many people still wish to debate the question to reconsider? Just show your hand if you want to debate the question on reconsideration. Is there any objection to ending the debate on the question of reconsideration and moving to a vote on the motion to reconsider? Very well, the debate is closed on the question of reconsideration, which requires a majority to pass, if it passes, then the question of selecting the, the, the Utah site for Westercon 76 would be back before the meeting, needing a three-fourths vote. But it only takes a majority to take it back before the meeting. All those in favor of reconsidering the vote to select Utah in 2024, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The negative has it. The motion is not reconsidered. We have now reached the point of no return on this as far as I'm concerned. The chair recognizes and apologizes not um, being able to see everyone uh, but it, and tries their best. But this is clearly a very overwhelming vote and all the issues have been raised before the meeting. There is one question before the meeting as item C1, business meeting site selection. This is a motion that was, this is a change to the Western Con bylaws that was first passed last year. If passed, it would, if it's ratified this year, it will take effect starting next year. At the moment, when we get into a situation like the one we just were with, with Utah or anyone, it takes a three-fourths vote to select a site. This would reduce the supermajority threshold to two-thirds. Um, is there anybody who wishes to debate this at all? Okay. Mr. Kowalczyk, uh, you are the maker of the original motion, and uh, the chair recognizes you for to debate in favor. Rick Kowalczyk, he, him. Find a place where I'm not going to get an echo. Um, probably wouldn't come, out, would she, wouldn't come out in this case, but it was a previous case where we spent about three hours trying to get to three quarters. Most things, at most, require two-thirds. Two-thirds seems like an overwhelming majority, and we should just go with that. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against ratification? Anyone else wanting to speak on this at all? In the back. I saw a hand, but not a person. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, no, not me. I'm second. No. There's, I was something else. The, no. Behind you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, right. Yes, you. I'll lean over the wall. Could someone name, please. Mormon. First name. I don't care. I don't care about sex. Right. No, no. You're I don't care about name. First you gave name. your last name. Only with a name. Mary. Thank you. Elizabeth. Born. It's for the secretary's Born. benefit. Thank you. Blue. There we go. Now, point of information. Can someone tell me the difference between three quarters and two thirds? <laughs> three fourths is 75% of the vote, and two thirds is 66 and two thirds percent of the vote. Is that a sufficient answer? All right. Three-fourths means there are three times, at least three times as many people voting in favor than are voting against. Two-thirds means there are three, I'm sorry, what is it? What is it? Twice as many people voting in favor than against. For example, if there were Let's see, we do, I can't do them all in my head, but if there were nine people, two-thirds of nine is six. Three-fourths would have been, would be six, and therefore would be eight, because it's the next whole number of us. Right. Is there anybody else who wishes to debate this question? Uh, okay? No? No, I'm sorry, I must not debate this question, I'm a separate question. All right. 
Is there anybody else who wishes to debate the ratification of the motion to change the three-fourths to two-thirds? Oh, I'm sorry, that I have a question on. Jason Spitzer? Yes. So my question is, given traditions both at World Prom and other large conventions that have site selections in this manner, and specifically at Western Prime to maintain our own tradition, what is your recommendation and your opinion, aside from the obvious difficulties in reaching three quarters, which I recognize, is there, how is it, not only is there a good argument to go to two thirds, but do you believe that there will be any major effect other than saving time when we can't reach three quarters, you know, what, what could the possible downsides be to going to two thirds? It would be improper for the chair to express an opinion on this question. Okay, that's fine, not your opinion, then what are the potential downsides objectively? The, there are no, uh, the, uh, the chair will not express an opinion on this question. Any, the, the, the very fact that something could be considered objection is itself debatable. It is up to the assembly to decide whether it, they think it's good or not. I believe, the chair believes that Mr. Kowalczyk made a question and point in, in it. If somebody wishes to continue to debating it, that's up to you. No, that's fine, I don't want to debate. I guess my, my last question in discussion or debate for this, because it could be considered debate, is, is there, uh, we understand that two-thirds will probably save time and make it easier to select a site, which is an uh, objective of the assembly. We won't say good or bad, it's just that's what we're trying to do, fine. Um, what other effects might this have that you can foresee? For those that aren't familiar with the process. Yeah. The member is attempting to elicit an opinion out of the chair that the no, chair no. would not. The, the, the chair said there are the only effect is it would take fewer votes to adopt the motion to select a site. That's the only thing it does objectively. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Just a minute, microphone, Mr. Chairman Kent Bloom. Um, in answer to the question that it was just raised, because I can debate it. Um, there is the opportunity for a co committee which is intensely disliked by some people uh, to actually be selected and it will be easier for that to happen and if, if, if it's two-thirds instead of three-quarters because it takes more people who intensely dislike the committee. Now, uh, that isn't necessarily applying today, but it could be in the past and that's the reason for the higher uh, requirement. The chair will count that as a motion, a speech against, and will first recognize Mr. Trimley because Mr. Valchek's had one shot at it already. This is a speech in favor. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Trimley, uh, he in. Speech, speech in favor. All committees have some people who intensely dislike them. Changing the threshold does not change that. And my very specific speech in favor, hashtag smothpocalypse. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak against the motion? And, and, and if you're going to raise questions, it's going to count as a speech against at this point in the way that Mr. Spencer. Uh, I understand, that's fine. I Right. Like, well, I, a, 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 unless you really want the floor to speak against the motion. No, I, I think, well, I think I've said it in favor. Then if, uh, it, what's the answer to you? No is the answer? We're not, we don't speaking? want to be recognized? No, I, no, I want to be recognized if possible, but it's not urgent. I think I have a speech in favor, but it's brief. Okay, do you have, okay, is there anybody else who wants to speak against I'm, ratification? I'm worried you're not. Is there somebody who wishes to speak in favor who has not yet spoken to the question? And I'm going to, uh, Mr. Roche. To more explicitly, Kevin Roche, he, him. To more explicitly lay on the table what my husband implied. Switching to two-thirds means a small, entrenched, naysaying group cannot stop a popular committee. Thank you. Is there some anybody else who wishes to speak against ratification? Stand up because maybe I'm missing people. 
I'm not seeing anybody else wishing to speak against. Um, would there be any objection to just allowing Mr. Kowalczyk, who started this, to act as the closing argument in favor of ratification? I'm not hearing that. Mr. Kowalczyk. Two-thirds is still a majority. We should go with them. Two-thirds of the majority is good enough. Is there any objection to ending the debate and bringing the matter to a vote? Very well. On the question of ratifying, Item C.1, reducing the threshold from three-fourths to two-thirds for, two, for the business meeting choosing a site. A majority being necessary to ratify. All those in favor of ratifying this motion, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to ratifying it, hands down. There being a majority in the affirmative, the, mo the motion is ratified, the constitutional amendment is ratified and will become a part of the Constitution at the end of this WesterCon and will first affect any site selections held next year. We are now at new business. No, other, no new business was submitted in advance. Is there somebody who wishes to submit new business? Ms. Hayes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, actually, I want to give somebody who had you, you down here. I'm sorry, I didn't. I apologize, Ms. Hayes. Jordan Brown, parliamentary question. Yes. Um, what's the process for merely making a statement? Um, the chair wants to. Uh, for that, you need the permissions assembly. Is there any is there any objection to recognizing Mr. Brown for a period not to exceed oh two minutes? Okay. Go ahead. So there's the, there was the question discussed earlier of whether Western Con should just die. Um, I think about that periodically as a longtime Western Con attendee. And my answer is that as long as there's a committee that's willing to run it, it should live. And people who don't want it to live don't have to come and don't have to offer to run it. So. Um, I, I, yeah, it, the, is the member wishing to speak on the, on that general subject? No, we're right. Parliamentary inquiry, please. Um, parliamentary inquiry, I want to know, uh, would that sort of speech as we just heard be an appropriate thing for the announcements portion of the agenda? I just want to clarify agenda items and what is appropriate for each section. Yeah, agenda, I, the, the last motion was, uh, the last speech was in the nature of debating the question, should Westercon continue? If we wish to take up such a motion as a formal discussion item, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize that eventually, but I think I would like to recognize Ms. Hayes. Uh, it's not part of announcements, really. Announcements are, are, tend to be more neutral. Ms. Hayes. Lisa Hayes, I move to adjourn. Is, um, that is, at this point, turns out to be a debatable question. Is there anyone who wishes to debate the motion to adjourn? Hearing none, a majority being necessary to adjourn the meeting. Uh, the chair will. Um, the chair will allow for. I, I actually should ask before I put this motion. Is are there people wishing to make announcements to the business meeting, fall uh, at uh, before adjournment? Without objection, the motion to adjourn. Uh, let me finish. Without objection, the motion to adjourn is laid on the table for the moment. Fair, fair. Rick Kowalczyk, president of MCPI. Um, MCPI was one of the groups that Utah approached for sponsorship before the vote. Should Utah not be able to find a local nonprofit as president of MCPI, I will do my best to get MCPI to be the sponsoring organization. But I really implore Utah to find a local nonprofit or to create your own. Thank you. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman, Kent Bloom. Uh, as an attorney and actually uh, as a member of several organizations, it takes about four hours to incorporate a nonprofit in Colorado online with, I think, $20 or $25 fee. Uh, I suspect that it's very similar in Utah. Almost all the Secretary of State's have processes on their websites 
for creating nonprofit corporations using boilerplate. And I recommend strongly that they look into this. Ms. Dinneroff, I believe you were trying, were you trying to be recognized or, oh, I apologize, you're just moving around. Uh, Mr. No, Mr. Roche in the back. I, I know you, I, 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 you're partially occluded by that pillar from my point of view, not your fault. Point of information, does the Constitution require a nonprofit or a tax-exempt organization? Well, we seem to have gotten down that rabbit hole. So. This matters. No, no, it matters, okay? The actual words which any of you who have a program book or progress report five or access to a web browser that can access westercon.org can read, but on page 33, section 3.5, which is in the first column, second major paragraph, for organizations within the United States of America, evidence that the sponsoring organization is a nonprofit association or corporation within the applicable state law of the sponsoring organization. The chair observes this does not require the group to be a tax exempt organization. It is actually possible to create a nonprofit, non tax exempt organization. But this meeting is not going to turn into a seminar on nonprofit law. <laughs> and, the chair, and the chair will not entertain any further announcements or attempts to debate uh, the que that, that issue. And would like to take back off the table at this time the, qu the motion to adjourn. Is there some further announcement? Perhaps about what might be happening this afternoon at the back bar? We're going to open early. Yay! And thank you for the information. I wanted that heard because right. it is a common confusion. Understood. Yes. Nonprofit and tax exempt are different things. Go button buttonhole Mr. Bloom or me or some of the others on this if you really want to. The question, are there any further announcements not related to anything we've already discussed? No, because the bar didn't say what time is early. I, I, the, I, the, I'm not asking for no. I'm asking if there's anybody else who wishes to make announcements. Okay, yes. Can they finish the bar? We'll okay. The answer is no, you're not going to even answer. You're not helping. Okay. There's an announcement in the back. Yeah. Due to the fact that WesterCon for next year was taken on at effectively the yeah, last minute, is, yeah. I, I just would like to say anyone that would like to volunteer would be gratefully appreciated. No, no, I, that is, that's a relevant, it's, 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 it is a relevant announcement for what they want to do. It's not with a nonprofit, it's getting staffing. Mask. No, mask, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> And name. I apologize. I, I missed that part. Sorry. That the, the question of privilege, and I, I missed it. My apologies. Yeah. The question is, you can restate the announcement, please. Okay. So the announcement is name. Name. Michelle Deborah Weisblatt name. Um, due to the lateness in which uh, the Anaheim next year's convention, Western Convention, tickets, we could greatly use help. Uh, and for anybody that's willing to volunteer with us, because we did take it on the last minute, we didn't have time to fill all the committee positions uh, before bidding because there was no bidding. So we would be greatly appreciated if people would please volunteer so that we can run a successful convention to keep it going uh, in the future and not let it die. Are there any further announcements not in the nature of attempting to debate a question surreptitiously? Yes. All right, Mr. Spitzer. Behind you. Right behind you. Jason Spitzer, um, it's not a debate. Just can we define what time the bar will open, please? Oh. That's what I was trying to ask. I know Mr. Spitzer, Mr. Spitzer yields the floor to Mr. Tremblay. Yes, I do. When you all see us standing behind the bar. Oh. <laughs> Without objection, the motion to adjourn is taken from the table. All those in favor of adjourning, raise your hands. 
Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. At darn it, took a little bit more than an hour. At 12:05 p.m., the business meeting of the 74th West Coast Science Fantasy Conference is adjourned at CDA.